When I was in school, they taught us at the、uh, sex education class that women were fertile right up until the menopause, or at least that was the implication, and the explanation didn't go any further than that.、Uh, menopause, of course, is when、uh, women stop、uh, menstruating and stop ovulating,、uh, so that is the hard sort of deadline on when a woman stops being fertile. If you can say there's any finish line. That is it. It's the most clear line that you can define. After which, a woman—it's impossible for a woman to conceive. But that is nowhere close to the full picture. And I can't remember exactly when I learnt more about it. But I think it was only when I was about eighteen that I was really confronted with the statistics and the the science behind the fertility rates of women going into their thirties, forties, and fifties. It seems like I'm not alone in this, and there are many women who are both educated and uneducated from all classes of people who don't seem to be informed about the facts on how fertility is affected by age, particularly in women. I initially got interested in this when I started seeing these screenshots online of these online dating profiles of thirty or forty-year-old women who are. Stating in their online dating profile that they would like to have children someday, but the age on the profile is listed as thirty-five, thirty-eight, and even forty. These women are not only childless and hoping to have children; they haven't even got a long-term partner yet. They, they're they're still single. They you could say they're not even close to having children. And although the places where these screenshots were being posted were not being、uh, completely kind to these women, so I started to wonder how widespread is this,、uh, what you could say, misplaced optimism. I thought it was pretty probable that these profiles had been selected or cherry picked to、uh, to depict the the worst cases of the,、um, the these women being. Hopelessly optimistic, so I went to Twitter and asked my male followers to help me out with their online dating profiles, preferably ones they're not actively using, and to collect a little bit of data for me in a kind of crude experiment, just to see how many women over the age of thirty-five still expecting to have children one day, given the fact that they are still single. One of my Twitter followers, Harry and Gladive. I'm sure <laughs> I'm、uh, I'm butchering that.、Uh, I think it's a Welsh or an Irish name.、Uh, he volunteered to、uh, to collect some data for me very kindly. He actually has his own YouTube channel. So if you go to the description of this video, you can see a link to his channel. He does political commentaries a lot like me. And I went on one of his streams a, a few weeks ago as well. So he collected data from a hundred. Bumble profiles from women who are over the age of thirty-five.、Um, if you don't know, Bumble is a—it's an app for finding、uh, single people in your area. This is obviously a non-random sample because they're just the women who are from Harry's area. But I thought it would give some kind of indication of of this issue. About half of them said that they already had children, and about half had no children, presumably. And of the Over thirty-five-year-olds who had no children, about half of those said that they explicitly wanted children someday. So that's twenty-two women out of a hundred who、uh, were under the impression that having children someday was still possible for them. I also did the same crude experiment with profiles on OkCupid that were given to me by someone called Samuel Johnston on my Twitter. I looked at a random selection of eighteen women over the age of thirty-five, and five of them said that they wanted. Children someday, so that's that's kind of a, a similar proportion. Five out of eighteen compared to twenty-two out of a hundred. Alexa, what is five divided by eighteen? Five divided by eighteen is zero point two seven seven eight. In both cases, it's about a quarter, and that's not. And that's not even removing the women who already have children, or the women who didn't say anything at all about their preferences. And of course, these are only women who are on these dating sites who are obviously self-selecting. This doesn't account for women who are in a relationship, women who are married. It's only the single women who are putting themselves out there on these online websites. So, but it's a big enough proportion that I feel it needs to be addressed. We need to talk about this. I'm not trying to make anyone feel guilty or to be panicked. It's just a case. Of knowing the facts so that you can plan your life around what is possible, what is likely. The trend at the moment in the UK and I believe in many other countries is that 
women and men are both having children later into life and they're, they're starting to have children later in their lives. So whereas in the 1970s, women were having their first child at the age of 23.7 on average, now the average age of women having their first child is 28.8, or that was the data collected in 2017, which was the last time the, uh, the ONS in, in the UK collected the data. So it's not a big increase, but the trend is pointing upwards. So this is an issue that's going to become more relevant in the future, I expect. There are two major factors that I would like to talk about here. The first is the effect that age has on just base level fertility in women. Uh, in men, just to say up front, men's fertility does decrease. It's not nearly as dramatic as women's, and it's not until about the mid-40s that it starts to dip quite considerably. For women, their fertility remains pretty constant throughout their 20s and then starts to decrease at 30s. And it has this sort of steady drop off from 30 to 40, where at 40, there's almost uh, no chance of conceiving or very low chance of conceiving, at least. Of course, every woman is different and the fertility rates you know, have, are different among women and they change differently depending on the woman. This is the average rates. If you wait until the woman is 30 to have her first child, then the later into her 30s that you start to conceive, the, probably the longer it will take for you to uh, get pregnant. And the sad truth is that some couples do wait too long and they end up needing to get fertility treatment because they are not getting pregnant. In most areas of the UK, I believe the first round of fertility treatment is free, but it's far from being a guaranteed um, success. So what happens to couples who don't successfully get pregnant from that first round is that they have to pay out of pocket, and I believe the cost is £30,000 to try again. And it's not as <laughs> it's not quite as easy and it's not quite as fun as conceiving naturally. Um, it's a kind of complicated medical procedure. Obviously, there are exceptions, and I'm pretty sure that everyone watching this can think of someone who was born to a mother who was 40 years old. Uh, it's not that uncommon because 40-year-old women are generally not completely infertile. It's just that it's it becomes less likely that they'll get pregnant, but that doesn't mean it's impossible. It's not advised to wait that late because it's pretty unlikely that you will get pregnant. For someone in their late 30s, it may take a year of conceiving just to find out that they're infertile. So it, it's a very long process to go through if you do have this trouble conceiving. The second major factor that I think is worth discussing is the fact that is the health implications of waiting uh, until your late 30s to conceive as a woman. There are all sorts of health complications that are associated with pregnancy for the child and for the mother, and pretty much all of those increase in likelihood as the woman gets older, above the age of 30. That's things like miscarriages and birth defects, uh, genetic defects, and of course difficulties with the actual labour and birth process. That's not to say that the risk is particularly high or over 50%, it's just that the risk could be lower. It's just that as a high relative risk to a younger woman. Whether you're a man or a woman, the older you get, the more you find that your body doesn't quite bounce back from injuries and from trauma quite as well as it used to. And that's just the same for childbirth. It's, a, um, it's quite a big trauma to, uh, to a woman. It's exhausting and there's a lot of sort of tissues and things that get all messed up and need to kind of come back into place and I won't go into the gory details but just generally being younger means your body recovers from that sort of stress um, quicker and with less complications and I'm not here to judge any couples who do want to have children into the late 30s like I said the, all these risks are still very low and if they do get pregnant it's more than likely that it's going to be completely safe and healthy for the mother and for the child. I just wish this information was a little bit more widespread and a little more known about so that people could plan their lives according to this information. I'd just like to say that it's my own personal opinion that if you do want to have children and it's a serious desire that you have for your life, I would suggest that you start thinking about it from as early as 25 or so. 
or even earlier if you already have a partner who you're committed to and who you think would be a responsible parent. For the men watching this, I know that you can wait a little bit longer if you think that it's likely you'll be able to get a partner who's younger than you, then you don't really have to worry about this. It's really not that uncommon for a man as old as 40 to be dating a you know, 25 year old. So it's not, it's not like you can wait up until your 40s even to start thinking about this. For young women who are in a committed relationship, who are with the man that they think they want to be the father of their children, it would be my suggestion that you plan to have children before the age of 35. That's the, and that is the recommendation of the NHS as well. And if you're completely single, that means that you might have to start thinking of your prospective partners in terms of not just how much you like them and how fun they are to be with, although those are also important things, uh, start looking at them in terms of being responsible, being uh, reliable, being, um, being, being able to commit to you and to your family. And to start looking at yourself and wondering if you need to gain some emotional maturity and some commitment as well in order to build that stable relationship for your family, that stable foundation that uh, your children will be born onto. I think a lot of young people think that they need to have their career sorted out, they need to own their own home or they need to have you know, gone out and seen the world and done travelling and done everything they want to do in their life before starting their family. And I don't think that you're a bad person if you do think that, but in my opinion it's not really necessary. If you have a stable relationship with your partner and you, and, and you are committed to each other and you have some level of emotional maturity then don't worry about the money don't worry about being educated or or having a career it's those are all things that you can do afterwards and just in my opinion i don't think they're that important if you have already decided that you want to have children i think that's the most important thing if you're new to this channel then you might not know that i had a i had my first child just a few months ago and it's been absolutely wonderful i can honestly say this is the best time I've ever had in my life and uh, you know it's tiring and I've got baby sick on every single item of clothing and furniture that I own but it's uh, it's just been great and uh, maybe my bias is coming out in this video and uh, it, you know it, it has made me realize how unimportant all of the things that I used to worry about are the things like the you know the mortgage or my job and you don't really need any of those things to be a good parent, in my opinion. Your babies, all they need is love and uh, and milk. Anyway, sorry to get a little bit cheesy there at the end, but um, thank you very much for watching. As always, if you're new to the channel, I'd, uh, go out, go ahead and check out some of my other videos. Please leave your comments below and let me know what you think of the video. What I'd love to know how many people watching this were already aware of these statistics compared to ones who had um, never heard about this or who were under similar misconceptions like I was about um, female fertility. All the best to you and I'll see you in the next video.